Sounds of things rattling, falling, and breaking. The logos of the Great California Shakeout, the American Red Cross, and Cal EMA, California Emergency Management Agency. Join the world's largest earthquake drill. Register at www.shakeout.org. How to prepare for an earthquake and survive. Three icons illustrate drop, cover, and hold on. So we're here in the shake trailer, which simulates an earthquake of different magnitudes. And the whole point of this is to give people an idea of what it feels like to be in an earthquake. And we bring this out to different locations. And Don, you haven't been in this yet, but it'll be interesting to see um, what it's like because you never know earthquakes could happen at any moment. The trailer violently shakes. Kelly and Don both drop to the floor and cover their heads as things crash down around them. So we did exactly what we're supposed to do. That's drop, cover, and hold on. And you, what did you think of that? It's, it's pretty wild. Uh, you don't, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of movement and I could definitely feel the thing falling on top, so. Uh, yeah. Right, and, and so what we found is that a lot of times in earthquakes, you think that a building is going to collapse on you, and that's your biggest chance of getting injured. The reality is that most injuries occur from stuff falling. So that's unsecured items like we see here. You've got all these books and things that can hit you in the head. You can have a big flat panel television come down. You could have, you know, maybe a coffee pot or something off of the top of your refrigerator. So there's a lot of things that could cause an injury. So we tell people and we teach them, when the shaking starts, you drop cover and hold on. And if you can, get underneath something. And like this case, we can't get under the couch. So it's just drop cover your head and hold on until the shaking stops. There's always a chance for aftershocks. You should be aware of that. And then after the shaking stops, that's when you take the steps of deciding if you're going to evacuate or what you're going to do. Maybe shut off the gas because the gas main is now leaking. So. It was a pretty wild first experience for me. So I have to say, um, you know, being new to California, that was my first time of even having something simulated that, um, and it is definitely an experience of just even trying to get down to the ground, and, uh, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's a, a very interesting experience, so glad I had the opportunity. All right, well, that's the shake trailer, and in the next segment, we're going to be talking about what you should put in your emergency preparedness kit. So we're here in downtown Sacramento where we're doing a demonstration for people on what it's like to be in an earthquake and we're also teaching people what you need to do to prepare yourself for an earthquake or any kind of disaster. Joining me is Don Lindblom with American Red Cross here. Thank you for joining me. Yeah, thank you. So what we want to find out is what is it we need to put in our kit that we would use in a disaster? Yeah, well what's really interesting there's some really basic items that you want to have um, to be ready for an event. So some of the things would be like having a flashlight extra batteries, batteries for the one and spares to have if something happens. Um, things like uh, making sure you have a three-day supply of water. Um, usually our general recommendation is a gallon of water per person per day. Well, that's important to know. Absolutely. Um, Non-perishable food items, so um, something canned goods type of thing, and make sure you have your can opener. Yeah, that's uh, really key. I know a lot of people are like, well, you're, you're going to be in your car and stranded somewhere or whatever, and you've got cans, how do you get in them, right? Exactly. That's, that's really clever. Another thing is just um, some of the things that we don't always think about, and we see this all the time at the Red Cross um, and the emergency response, but make sure you have um, a, a, your prescription drugs, you know, have an extra supply on hand. And if you don't have that, have a copy of actually your prescription in and of itself, because that's another piece that, you know, we can get refilled or do something like that, but True. Um, have that in place. Some of the other items, if you have infants, um, having uh, baby food and formula, um, that's available and on hand. And another thing to um, think about is that, you know, you don't know in the event, you know, how, um, you know, how much injuries or how people might get harmed during the event. So make sure in your kit that you have a first aid kit um, so that you can administer that. Um, if anything happens, and um, those so are then you have that. So in here, like, so here's like a little tiny first aid kit, and it doesn't have to be a big fancy one. You don't mm -hmm. have to get something that's cost you fifty or a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. No, just, it can be, just, just be a really basic one. It doesn't have to be um, any, like you said, anything too too huge. I think another, toilet paper. Toilet paper could be a handy item to have. You know, and people <laughs> laugh about that, but it's true. You never know when you're going to get stuck, and you may need that, right? <laughs> it is important to have. I think some other things, you know, a spare set of keys um, in case you need that access to your home or, or to that sort of thing. Oh, I didn't thing. think about that, right. So, a lot of good things that you can have. Um, people can go actually to our website to find a full list of the type of items that you want to uh, do to um, make your own kit. And it really doesn't take a lot of effort. Even if you do it as a family, for example, you could do one item per month or one week per month. Just pick it up when you do your regular grocery store run. and. Um, it's just it's a good thing to have, you know, in, in the event of any type of disaster emergency that you're ready.
ready to go. And that's great. These are great tips. And it doesn't have to be expensive. You could just go around your house and just pick some things and put it in a bag and have it ready to go for whatever the disaster may be. Absolutely. All right. Well, thanks, Don. Thanks right. for showing us. And if you want more information, you can go to the American Red Cross website, which is... Uh, www.redcrosscrc.org. Uh, uh, and then we also have totallyunprepared.com, which is a place you can see some videos and some other ways in which you can prepare yourself and your house and secure your items if uh, you're going to be in, uh, in an area where there might be an earthquake, which is basically all of California. Thanks for joining us. Sounds of things rattling, falling, and breaking. The logos of the Great California Shakeout, the American Red Cross, and Cal EMA, California Emergency Management Agency. Join the world's largest earthquake drill. Register at www.shakeout.org.